from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Vijay Amirtharaj. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Le Fi de la Providence from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This Mass is offered for all of us Canadians be willing to grow in openness to seeing Christ in others and healing for our indigenous brothers and sisters here in Canada. May we welcome all immigrants who are finding their new home here, and may we reach out to the neglected persons in our care homes for seniors and single parents. Our thanks to Le Fi de la Providence for making it possible for tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada and around the world to share in this celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers coming together for this celebration, we take a moment to acknowledge our sins and to pray for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that celebrating the mysteries of the Lord's resurrection, we may merit to receive the joy of our redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met, him, they met with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 the city the Lord founded 
the Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. All you nations praise the Lord. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon, Philistia too, and Tyre, with Ethiopia. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in it. For the Most High himself will establish it. All you nations praise the Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My sheep listen to me, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A certain Christian missionary, a Catholic priest, was doing a very good job in his mission village in the African interior. And in a few years' time, he had baptized many people and built a church, a school, and a health center. And warning to his restless work and the busy schedule, he took ill and had to be flown back to his native country in Europe for treatment. And after many months, he was well enough to return back to Africa. And to his surprise and utter disappointment, 
he discovered that the whole village had abandoned his church and turned to a local evangelical preacher. Even the church he built had now an evangelical signboard in front of it. What went wrong, he asked himself. How did his flourishing mission collapse overnight? What did I do wrong, he asked his former church members. The truth hit home one day when a woman said to him, Father, you did a lot for us. You gave our children clothes. You built a church, and you built up our village. But there was one thing that you did not do. You did not make us know Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. Sisters and brothers, doing the work of God and doing the work of the Lord is great. But knowing the Lord of the work comes first. The apostles and their companions were so successful in bringing a great number of people to become believers in the Lord because the Lord was with them, but even more importantly, they were with the Lord. One would have thought that such horrendous persecution of the new church would have chilled the effect it was able to have in the first century world. It was decided on high places to stamp out the church then and there but it was not to be. The founder of our Holy Cross congregation, Blessed Basil Moro, used to say that if a project is simply a human work, it can fail. But if it is the work of God, God will find a way to carry it forward. And this is what happened with the early church community. The believers were driven out of their homes and out of their cities. They lost their properties, but not their faith. The Lord was with them, and they were with the Lord. In our gospel reading today, in his encounter with some of the frustrated Jews, Jesus speaks of his special relationship, his rootedness with his heavenly Father. And that rootedness enabled him to do the work he is doing, the work of preaching, the work of healing, and the work of communicating God's special love and compassion for the people of God. Sisters and brothers, in our society today, Faith life in general is facing challenges. In our society today, the number of those who claim to be nuns and duns are increasing. Nuns are not N-U-N-S, but N-O-N-E-S. People who say, I don't believe in any God. The duns are those who say, I have tried it all and I am done with religion. In many parts of the world, the church is facing physical persecution. However, in this part of the world, our persecution is not so much in the form of physical persecution, but in the form of indifference. On a regular basis, I listen to parents who lament about their children not believing in anything or not practicing the faith they provided to them. I am sure time to time we are all disappointed with the way our society is functioning today. However, there is always hope because it is God's work. 
and God will find a way to sustain what he started. So the invitation for you and for me is to be always rooted in Christ, to live with faith and hope, and to do all that we can as followers of Jesus, as children of God, to spread the gospel of love and peace in our world. Amen. And now let us offer our prayers and petitions to God with faith. For all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. This Easter season, we offer our community prayer in thanksgiving for the new life that is ours in the risen Christ. May we be strengthened by his healing presence among us so that we might live in peace and glorify him by our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us participating in this Mass, that the light of the risen Lord may dispel all darkness from our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who are struggling with the challenges of life, that God's peace may be with them at this time. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we lift up our prayers and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual food. Blessed God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, Full of your glory, O oh, 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our bishop, and all the clergy and the people you have gathered. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh, amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, thanks, thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.